Seven World Trade Center Seven WTC refers to two buildings that have existed at the same location within the World Trade Center site in Lower Manhattan, New York City. The current structure is the second building to bear that name and address in the World Trade Center complex. The original structure, part of the original World Trade Center, was completed in 1987 and was destroyed in the September 11 attacks in 2001. The current building opened in May 2006. Both buildings were developed by Larry Silverstein, who holds a ground lease for the site from the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. The original Seven World Trade Center was 47 stories tall, clad in red masonry, and occupied a trapezoidal footprint. An elevated walkway connected the building to the World Trade Center Plaza. The building was situated above a consolidated Edison power substation, which imposed unique structural design constraints. When the building opened in 1987, Silverstein had difficulties attracting tenants. Solomon Brothers signed a long-term lease in 1988, and became the main tenants of 7WTC. On September 11, 2001, the structure was damaged by debris when the nearby North Tower of the World Trade Center collapsed. The debris also ignited fires, which continued to burn throughout the afternoon on lower floors of the building. The building's internal fire suppression system lacked water pressure to fight the fires, and the building collapsed completely at 5 hours 21 minutes and 10 seconds p.m., according to FEMA, while the 2008 NIST study placed the final collapse time at 5 hours 20 minutes and 52 seconds p.m. The collapse began when a critical internal column buckled and triggered structural failure throughout, which was first visible from the exterior with the crumbling of a rooftop penthouse structure at 5 hours 20 minutes and 33 seconds p.m. The collapse made the old Seven World Trade Center the first tall building known to have collapsed primarily due to uncontrolled fires, and at the time, the only steel skyscraper in the world to have collapsed due to fire. Construction of the new Seven World Trade Center began in 2002, and was completed in 2006. The building is 52 stories tall, plus one underground floor, making it the 28th tallest in New York. It is built on a smaller footprint than the original, and is bounded by Greenwich, Vesey, Washington, and Barclay Streets on the east, south, west, and north, respectively. A small park across Greenwich Street occupies space that was part of the original building's footprint. The current building's design emphasizes safety, with a reinforced concrete core, wider stairways, and thicker fireproofing of steel columns. It also incorporates numerous green design features. The building was the first commercial office building in New York City to receive the U.S. Green Building Council's Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design LEED certification, where it won a gold rating. It was also one of the first projects accepted to be part of the Council's pilot program for leadership in energy and environmental design, core and shell development LEED CS. Topic. Original building 1987 Topic design and layout The original Seven World Trade Center was a 47-story building, designed by Emery Roth and Sons, with a red granite facade. The building was 610 feet 190 meters tall, with a trapezoidal footprint that was 330 feet 100 meters long and 140 feet 43 meters wide. Tishman Realty and Construction managed construction of the building. The groundbreaking ceremony was hosted on October 2, 1984. 
The building opened in May 1987, becoming the seventh structure of the World Trade Center. Point seven World Trade Center was constructed above a two story Con Edison substation that had been located on the site since 1967. The substation had a Kaisen foundation designed to carry the weight of a future building of 25 stories containing 600,000 square feet. The final design for Seven World Trade Center was for a much larger building than originally planned when the substation was built. The structural design of Seven World Trade Center therefore included a system of gravity column transfer trusses and girders, located between floors 5 and 7, to transfer loads to the smaller foundation. Existing caissons installed in 1967 were used, along with new ones, to accommodate the building. The fifth floor functioned as a structural diaphragm, providing lateral stability and distribution of loads between the new and old caissons. Above the seventh floor, the building's structure was a typical tube frame design, with columns in the core and on the perimeter, and lateral loads resisted by perimeter moment frames, a shipping and receiving ramp, which served the entire World Trade Center complex, occupied the eastern quarter of the seven World Trade Center footprint. The building was open below the third floor, providing space for truck clearance on the shipping ramp. The spray-on fireproofing for structural steel elements was gypsum-based monocoat, which had a two-hour fire rating for steel beams, girders and trusses, and a three-hour rating for columns. Mechanical equipment was installed on floors 4 through 7, including 12 transformers on the fifth floor. Several emergency generators installed in the building were used by the New York City Office of Emergency Management, Solomon Smith Barney, and other tenants. In order to supply the generators, 24,000 gallons L of diesel fuel were stored below ground level. Diesel fuel distribution components were located at ground level, up to the ninth floor. After the World Trade Center bombings of February 26, 1993, New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani decided to situate the Emergency Command Center and associated fuel tanks at Seven World Trade Center. Although this decision was criticized in light of the events of 9-11, the fuel in the building is today not believed to have contributed to the collapse of the building. The roof of the building included a small west penthouse and a larger east mechanical penthouse. Each floor had 47,000 square feet, 4,400 square meters of rentable office space, which made the building's floor plans considerably larger than most office buildings in the city. In all, Seven World Trade Center had 1,868,000 square feet square meters of office space. Two pedestrian bridges connected the main World Trade Center complex, across Vesey Street, to the third floor of Seven World Trade Center. The lobby of Seven World Trade Center held three murals by artist Al Held, The Third Circle, Pan North 12, and Vorses 7. Topic tenants In June 1986, before construction was completed, developer Larry Silverstein signed Drexel Burnham Lambert as a tenant to lease the entire Seven World Trade Center building for $3 billion over a term of 30 years. In December 1986, after the Boski insider trading scandal, Drexel Burnham Lambert cancelled the lease, leaving Silverstein to find other tenants. Spicer and Oppenheim agreed to lease 14% of the space, but for more than a year, as Black Monday and other factors adversely affected the lower Manhattan real estate market, Silverstein was unable to find tenants for the remaining space. 
By April 1988, he had lowered the rent and made other concessions. In November 1988, Solomon Brothers withdrew from plans to build a large new complex at Columbus Circle in Midtown, and agreed to a 20 year lease for the top 19 floors of Seven World Trade Center. The building was extensively renovated in 1989 to accommodate the needs of Solomon Brothers. This led to the alternative naming of the building as the Solomon Brothers Building. Most of three existing floors were removed as tenants continued to occupy other floors, and more than 350 tons US of steel were added to construct three double-height trading floors. Nine diesel generators were installed on the fifth floor as part of a backup power station. Essentially, Solomon is constructing a building within a building, and it's an occupied building, which complicates the situation, said a district manager of Silverstein Properties. The unusual task was possible, said Larry Silverstein, because it was designed to allow for entire portions of floors to be removed without affecting the building's structural integrity, on the assumption that someone might need double height floors. At the time of the September 11, 2001, attacks, Solomon Smith Barney was by far the largest tenant in Seven World Trade Center, occupying 1,202,900 square feet 111,750 square meters 64 percent of the building which included floors 28 to 45. Other major tenants included ITT Hartford Insurance Group 122,590 square feet 11,400 square meters American Express Bank International 106,117 square feet 9,900 square meters Standard Chartered Bank 111,398 square feet 10,350 square meters and the Securities and Exchange Commission 106,117 square feet, 9,850 square meters. Smaller tenants included the Internal Revenue Service Regional Council 90,430 square feet, 8,400 square meters and the United States Secret Service 85,343 square feet, 7,900 square meters. The smallest tenants included the New York City Office of Emergency Management, National Association of Insurance Commissioners, Federal Home Loan Bank, First State Management Group Inc., Provident Financial Management, and the Immigration and Naturalization Service. The Department of Defense DOD and Central Intelligence Agency CIA shared the 25th floor with the IRS. The clandestine CIA office was revealed only after the 9-11 attacks. Floors 46 to 47 were mechanical floors, as were the bottom six floors and part of the seventh floor. Topic: 9-11 and collapse. Topic: Collapse. As the North Tower collapsed on September 11, 2001, heavy debris hit Seven World Trade Center, damaging the south face of the building and starting fires that continued to burn throughout the afternoon. The collapse also caused damage to the southwest corner between floors 7 and 17 and on the south face between floor 44 and the roof. Other possible structural damage included a large vertical gash near the center of the south face between floors 24 and 41. The building was equipped with a sprinkler system, but had many single point vulnerabilities for failure. The sprinkler system required manual initiation of the electrical fire pumps, rather than being a fully automatic system. The floor level controls had a single connection to the sprinkler water riser, and the sprinkler system required some power for the fire pump to deliver water. 
Additionally, water pressure was low, with little or no water to feed sprinklers. After the North Tower collapsed, some firefighters entered Seven World Trade Center to search the building. They attempted to extinguish small pockets of fire, but low water pressure hindered their efforts. Over the course of the day, fires burned out of control on several floors of Seven World Trade Center, the flames visible on the east side of the building. During the afternoon, the fire was also seen on floors 6 to 10, 13 to 14, 19 to 22, and 29 to 30. In particular, the fires on floors 7 through 9 and 11 through 13 continued to burn out of control during the afternoon. At approximately 2 p.m., firefighters noticed a bulge in the southwest corner of Seven World Trade Center between the 10th and 13th floors, a sign that the building was unstable and might collapse. During the afternoon, firefighters also heard creaking sounds coming from the building. Around 3.30 p.m., FDNY Chief Daniel A. Nigro decided to halt rescue operations, surface removal, and searches along the surface of the debris near Seven World Trade Center and evacuate the area due to concerns for the safety of personnel. The fire expanded the girders of the building, causing some to lose their structural integrity. This led column number 79, a critical column supporting a large part of the 13th floor, to buckle, causing the floors above it to collapse to the 5th floor, however, this could not be seen from outside the building. The structure also developed cracks in the façade just before the entire building started to fall. According to FEMA, this collapse started at 5 hours 20 minutes and 33 seconds p.m. EDT when the East Mechanical Penthouse started crumbling. Differing times are given as to what time the building completely collapsed, at 5 hours 21 minutes and 10 seconds p.m. EDT according to FEMA, and at 5 hours 20 minutes and 52 seconds p.m. EDT according to NIST. There were no casualties associated with the collapse. NIST found no evidence to support conspiracy theories such as the collapse being the result of explosives. It found that a combination of factors including physical damage, fire and the building's unusual construction set off a chain reaction collapse. Topic: Reports In May 2002, the Federal Emergency Management Agency FEMA issued a report on the collapse based on a preliminary investigation conducted jointly with the Structural Engineering Institute of the American Society of Civil Engineers under leadership of Dr. W. Jean Corley, P.E. FEMA made preliminary findings that the collapse was not primarily caused by actual impact damage from the collapse of one WTC and two WTC but by fires on multiple stories ignited by debris from the other two towers that continued burning unabated due to lack of water for sprinklers or manual firefighting. The report did not reach conclusions about the cause of the collapse and called for further investigation. Subsequently, the National Institute of Standards and Technology (NIST) was authorized to lead an investigation into the structural failure and collapse of the World Trade Center Twin Towers and Seven World Trade Center. The investigation, led by Dr. S. Shyam Sunder, drew upon in-house technical expertise as well as the knowledge of several outside private institutions, including the Structural Engineering Institute of the American Society of Civil Engineers say, ASCE, the Society of Fire Protection Engineers SFPE, the National Fire Protection Association NFPA, the American Institute of Steel Construction AISC, the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat CTBUH, and the Structural Engineers Association of New York CONI. The bulk of the investigation of Seven World Trade Center was delayed until after reports were completed on the Twin Towers. 
In the meantime, NIST provided a preliminary report about 7 WTC in June 2004, and thereafter released occasional updates on the investigation. According to NIST, the investigation of Seven World Trade Center was delayed for a number of reasons, including that NIST staff who had been working on Seven World Trade Center were assigned full-time from June 2004 to September 2005 to work on the investigation of the collapse of the Twin Towers. In June 2007, Shyam Sunder explained, We are proceeding as quickly as possible while rigorously testing and evaluating a wide range of scenarios to reach the most definitive conclusion possible. The 7 WTC investigation is in some respects just as challenging, if not more so, than the study of the towers. However, the current study does benefit greatly from the significant technological advances achieved and lessons learned from our work on the towers. In November 2008, NIST released its final report on the causes of the collapse of Seven World Trade Center. This followed NIST's August 21, 2008, draft report which included a period for public comments, and was followed in 2012 by a peer-reviewed summary in the Journal of Structural Engineering. In its investigation, NIST utilized ANSYS to model events leading up to collapse initiation and LS-DINA models to simulate the global response to the initiating events. NIST determined that diesel fuel did not play an important role, nor did the structural damage from the collapse of the twin towers or the transfer elements trusses, girders, and cantilever overhangs. The lack of water to fight the fire was an important factor. The fires burned out of control during the afternoon, causing floor beams near column 79 to expand and push a key girder off its seat, triggering the floors to fail around column 79 on floors 8 to 14. With a loss of lateral support across nine floors, column 79 buckled, pulling the east penthouse and nearby columns down with it. With the buckling of these critical columns, the collapse then progressed east to west across the core, ultimately overloading the perimeter support, which buckled between floors 7 and 17, causing the remaining portion of the building above to fall downward as a single unit. The fires, which were fueled by office contents and burned for seven hours, along with the lack of water, were the key reasons for the collapse. Incidentally, this made the old 7 WTC the only steel skyscraper at the time to have collapsed from fire. When 7 WTC collapsed, debris caused substantial damage and contamination to the borough of Manhattan Community College's Fitterman Hall building, located adjacent at 30 West Broadway, to the extent that the building was not salvageable. A revised plan called for demolition in 2009 and completion of the new Fitterman Hall in 2012, at a cost of $325 million. The adjacent Verizon Building, an Art Deco building constructed in 1926, had extensive damage to its east facade from the collapse of Seven World Trade Center, though it was able to be restored at a cost of US$1.4 billion. Files relating to numerous federal investigations had been housed in Seven World Trade Center. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission estimated over 10,000 of its cases were affected. Investigative files in the Secret Service's largest field office were lost, with one Secret Service agent saying, All the evidence that we stored at Seven World Trade, in all our cases, went down with the building. Copies of emails in connection with the WorldCom scandal that were later requested by the SEC from Solomon Brothers, a subsidiary of Citigroup housed in the building, were also destroyed. The NIST report found no evidence supporting the conspiracy theories that Seven World Trade Center was brought down by controlled demolition. Specifically, the window breakage pattern and blast sounds that would have resulted from the use of explosives were not observed. 
The suggestion that an incendiary material such as thermite was used instead of explosives was considered unlikely by NIST because of observations of the fire and the building's structural response to the fire, and because it is unlikely the necessary quantity of material could have been planted without discovery. Based on its investigation, NIST reiterated several recommendations it had made in its earlier report on the collapse of the Twin Towers. It urged immediate action on a further recommendation, that fire resistance should be evaluated under the assumption that sprinklers are unavailable, and that the effects of thermal expansion on floor support systems be considered. Recognizing that current building codes are drawn to prevent loss of life rather than building collapse, the main point of NIST's recommendations was that buildings should not collapse from fire even if sprinklers are unavailable. <laughs> New building The new Seven World Trade Center has 52 stories and is 741 feet 226 meters tall. The building has 42 floors of leasable space, starting at the 11th floor, and a total of 1,700,000 square feet square meters of office space. The first 10 floors house an electrical substation which provides power to much of Lower Manhattan. The office tower has a narrower footprint at ground level than did its predecessor, so the course of Greenwich Street could be restored to reunite Tribeca and the financial district. The original building, on the other hand, had bordered West Broadway on the east, necessitating the destruction of Greenwich Street between Barclay Street and the northern border of the World Trade Center superblock. <laughs> Design David Childs of Skidmore, Owings and Merrill worked in conjunction with glass artist and designer James Carpenter to create a design that uses ultra-clear, low iron glass to provide reflectivity and light, with stainless steel spandrels behind the glass to help reflect sunlight. Stainless steel used in the building facade is molybdenum containing type 316, which provides improved resistance to corrosion. To enclose the power substation and improve its aesthetics, the base of the building has a curtain wall with stainless steel louvers that provide ventilation for the machinery. During the day, the curtain wall reflects light, while at night it is illuminated with blue LED lights. The curtain wall around the lobby uses heavily laminated, heat-strengthened glass that meets high standards for blast resistance. At night, a large cube of light above the lobby also emanates blue light, while during the day it provides white light to the lobby, and at dusk it transitions to violet and back to blue. Inside the main lobby, artist Jenny Holzer created a large light installation with glowing text moving across wide plastic panels. The entire wall, which is 65 feet 20 meters wide and 14 feet 4 .3 meters tall, changes color according to the time of day. Holzer worked with Clara Silverstein, the wife of Larry Silverstein, to select poetry for the art installation. The wall is structurally fortified as a security measure. The building is being promoted as the safest skyscraper in the U.S. according to Silverstein Properties, the owner of the building. It incorporate s a host of life safety enhancements that will become the prototype for new high-rise construction. The building has two-foot-thick reinforced concrete and fireproofed elevator and stairway access shafts. The original building used only drywall to line these shafts. The stairways are wider than in the original building to permit faster egress. Point seven World Trade Center is equipped with Otis destination elevators. 
After pressing a destination floor number on a lobby keypad, passengers are grouped and directed to specific elevators that will stop at the selected floor there are no buttons to press inside the elevators. This system is designed to reduce elevator waiting and travel times. The elevator system is integrated with the lobby turnstile and card reader system that identifies the floor on which a person works as he or she enters and can automatically call the elevator for that floor. Nearly 30% of structural steel used in the building consists of recycled steel. Rainwater is collected and used for irrigation of the park and to cool the building. Along with other sustainable design features, the building is designed to allow in plenty of natural light. Power is metered to tenants to encourage them to conserve energy. The heating steam is reused to generate some power for the building, and recycled materials are used for insulation and interior materials. Topic construction The construction phase of the new Seven World Trade Center began on May 7, 2002, with the installation of a fence around the construction site. Tishman Construction Corporation of New York began work at the new Seven World Trade Center in 2002, soon after the site was cleared of debris. Restoring the Con Ed electrical substation was an urgent priority to meet power demands of Lower Manhattan. Because Seven World Trade Center is separate from the main 16-acre World Trade Center site, Larry Silverstein required approval from only the Port Authority, and rebuilding was able to proceed quickly. Building 7 was not included in the original World Trade Center master plan by Daniel Liebskind, but was designed by Skidmore, Owings and Merrill under the leadership of David Childs, who largely redesigned one World Trade Center. Once construction of the power substation was complete in October 2003, work proceeded on building the office tower. An unusual approach was used in constructing the building, erecting the steel frame before adding the concrete core. This approach allowed the construction schedule to be shortened by a few months. Construction was completed in 2006 at a cost of $700 million. Though Silverstein received $861 million from insurance on the old building, he owed more than $400 million on its mortgage. Costs to rebuild were covered by $475 million in Liberty Bonds, which provide tax-exempt financing to help stimulate rebuilding in Lower Manhattan and insurance money that remained after other expenses. A 15,000 square feet (1,400 square meters) triangular park was created between the extended Greenwich Street and West Broadway by David Childs with Ken Smith and his colleague Annie Wein. Mayor, of Ken Smith Landscape Architect. The park comprises an open central plaza with a fountain and flanking groves of sweetgum trees and boxwood shrubs. At the center of the fountain, sculptor Jeff Koons created balloon flower red, whose mirror-polished stainless steel represents a twisted balloon in the shape of a flower. Topic opening The building was officially opened at noon on May 23, 2006, with a free concert featuring Suzanne Vega, Citizen Cope, Bill Ware Vibes, Brazilian Girls, Olabel, Pharaoh's Daughter, Ronan Tynan of the Irish Tenors, and special guest Lou Reed. Prior to opening, in March 2006, the new Seven World Trade Center frontage and lobby were used in scenes for the movie Perfect Stranger with Halle Berry and Bruce Willis. Since the building opened, several unleased upper floors have been used for events such as charity lunches, fashion shows, and black tie galas. Silverstein Properties allowed space in the new building to be used for these events as a means to draw people to see the building. From September 8 to October 7, 2006, the work of photographer Jonathan Hyman was displayed in An American Landscape, a free exhibit hosted by the World Trade Center Memorial Foundation at Seven World Trade Center. 
The photographs captured the response of people in New York City and across the United States after the September 11, 2001, attacks. The exhibit took place on the 45th floor while the space remained available for lease. By March 2007, 60% of the building had been leased. In September 2006, Moody's signed a 20-year lease to rent 15 floors of 7 World Trade Center. Other tenants that had signed leases in 7 World Trade Center, as of May 2007, included ABN AMRO, Ameriprise Financial Inc., law firm WilmerHale, Darby & Darby PC, Mansueto Ventures LLC, business publisher of Fast Company and & Inc., and the New York Academy of Sciences. The space occupied by Mansueto Ventures has been designed to use the maximum amount of natural light and has an open floor plan. The space used by the New York Academy of Sciences on the 40th floor, designed by H3 Hardy Collaboration Architecture, works with the parallelogram shape of the building. Keeping with the green design of the building, the NYAS uses recycled materials in many of the office furnishings, has zoned heating and cooling, and lights that detect motion, coming on automatically only when people are present, and adjust according to incoming sunlight. Silverstein Properties also has offices and the Silver Suites Executive Office Suites in Seven World Trade Center, along with office space used by the architectural and engineering engineering firms working on One World Trade Center, 150 Greenwich Street 175, Greenwich Street, and 200 Greenwich Street. The building became fully leased in September 2011 when MSCI was reported to have leased a 125,000 square feet 11,600 square meters space on the top floor. Topic. See also List of tallest buildings in New York City World Trade Center in popular culture